Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Today I'm going to take a look at this Machinist X99 Air S9 motherboard for socket LJ2011 version 3 from China. This motherboard I was able to purchase only because of your support, thanks for everyone who was able to do some small donations through PayPal, and thanks to everyone who was using my AliExpress affiliated links. Only because of your support I was able to afford to buy this many X99 motherboards from China to make these videos and these reviews. Machinist X99 RS9 is the latest release from Machinist for LGA 2011 version 3 platform. This unfortunately means that the motherboard is using a desktop chipset and not X99 C612. The motherboard can be delivered with a B85 or Q87 chipset, maybe some of the motherboards are even using H81 chipset, I don't know. The motherboard looks extremely similar to Machinist X99Z version 102, but due to the chipset limitation, the number of USB 3 ports and SATA 3 ports has been reduced. Still, there is also an improvement compared to Machinist X99Z version 102. On the motherboard, you will find an M.2 slot for Wi Fi and Bluetooth expansion cards. Now, let's quickly go through the technical specification of the motherboard. Unsurprisingly, you will find LJ2011 version 3 socket on the motherboard, Intel Xeon E5 V3 V4 CPUs are supported, as well as Intel Core i7 5000 and 6000 series. Here you will find PC Express X16 slot to install your graphics cards. Additionally, there are two PC Express X1 slots, which can be used to install a USB, sound or extra graphics card with this connection. M.2 slot for SATA SSDs, M.2 slot for NVMe SSDs, M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth expansion cards. Memory system is working in quad-channel configuration, this is DDR4, two memory slots on each side of the processor. Additionally, here you will find four SATA 3 ports, and this port I have marked because this port is shared with this M.2 slot. And if you're installing an M.2 SSD drive over here, this port is not going to work. So it's shared. The motherboard in total has only four SATA 3 ports. For the front panel, we have everything standard for a budget Chinese X99 motherboard. USB 3.0 header, audio header, USB 2.0 header, clear single jumper, and buttons and LEDs for the front panel. Additionally, here is a 4-pin fan connector and the CPU fan connector is located over here. Here is also a 3-pin fan connector, and here is one more. BIOS chip is located over here, which is very convenient, because none of these capacitors are interfering with the clip if you would like to connect your CH341A or some other flash programmer to read or write the BIOS. As always, all technical specification you will find in the technical slides by the end of the video, there you will find audio codec model, network model, and everything else which you might find interesting. But now let's take a quick glance at the I.O. panel or the back side of the motherboard. Here, as you can see, we have everything standard. We have PS2 ports, we have four USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, Ethernet port and a very simple audio output. The power delivery system on this motherboard is exactly the same as on Huanangjie X99 Atom app, which means a four-phase controller, only three phases are used, each phase has a doubler, and on a doubler we have two pairs of MOSFETs. Detailed specification for these MOSFETs controllers and doublers you will find on your screen and by the end of the video in technical slides. And one last but not the least thing I have to mention is that my motherboard came to me with the Intel Q87 chipset. Your motherboard might come to you with the Intel B85 chipset or maybe some other chipset like H81, but mine has Q87 chipset and this is what I'm going to test with. All technical information about my tests and all test results will be available in my technical slides by the end of the video, as usual, but in the video I'm going to talk about a few important aspects about Machinist X99 RS9. Let's start with the fact that the motherboard comes with a disgusting BIOS. Not only the BIOS is lacking multiple features, such as RAM time is configuration, but it's also not working properly. First, I have started to test the motherboard with the original BIOS, and I was getting the standard Chinese issues, means USB 3.0 ports did not work properly. Trying to run Crystal Disk Mark Benchmark with this SSD drive, this is Samsung T5, 
I was getting all sorts of weird behavior. The motherboard was hanging, system was crashing, and things like that. Because the motherboard looks so nice and it seems to be done pretty well, and the components on the motherboard are basically identical to Huonanchi X99 ATEM F, I have decided to try the BIOS from Huonanchi X99 ATEM F. Especially because we already have a modified BIOS which has unlocked memory timers configuration. And unsurprisingly, the BIOS worked on Machinist X99 RS9. Thus, I have completely retested the motherboard using Huonanchi X99 ATEM F BIOS, and with this BIOS, I don't find any major flaw of the motherboard. The USB 3 ports are working fine. Yes, the speed is not as high as we would hope for, but the system is stable and is working perfectly fine. Crystal Disk Benchmark running with this Samsung T5 passes in 5-6 minutes, which is pretty, pretty good. Still, there are some issues which cannot be solved with any BIOS. Just like any other budget X99, X79 motherboard from China, you do not have proper temperature readings and also the motherboard reports wrong power consumptions for your CPU. If you would, for example, use HW Info or HW Monitor or ADA64 to validate your CPU power consumption, you will see some garbage values which are not accurate. Unfortunately, there is no way to fix it and you just have to live with it. The other very common issue is the sleep mode. I have tested with the UEFI and legacy mode installation, Windows and Linux, sleep mode doesn't work. It doesn't matter which BIOS I try to use, original X99 RS9 or Huonanchi X99 ATEM F, sleep mode doesn't work. The system goes to sleep and then doesn't wake up. Unfortunately, this is a hardware limitation and not a software limitation, thus any BIOS upgrades will not be able to solve this issue. Actually, in the original X99 RS9 BIOS, sleep mode is disabled in the BIOS, so people don't even try to use it. The motherboard was tested with the E5 2678V3 and i7-6800K. Good thing is that with i7-6800K, which has only 28 PCI Express lanes, we have fully functional motherboard. This Express X16 slot is routed correctly, and even with a limited CPU such as i7-6800K, it's still PCI Express X16, and M.2 slot is still working as M.2 PCI Express 3.0 X4. These two PCI Express X1 slots are connected to the chipset, thus they are not affected by your CPU. Still, one thing that annoys me is that when I'm installing i7-6800K, in Device Manager I can see an unknown device. I don't know what it is and how to solve it. I have tried multiple different drivers, installing and reinstalling Windows. This unknown device is staying there. It does not affect the motherboard performance and the system is completely stable, everything works as it should, but it's still very annoying that there is an unknown device in the device manager. If I swap the CPU to E5 2678V3, the unknown device disappears and the system works as it should, the same as a 7-6800K, but just without an unknown device. To test PC Express X1 slots, this one and this one, I have used my NVIDIA GT710 graphics card, which has a connection of PC Express X1. Much to my surprise, the graphics card worked well in both of the slots, and NVIDIA control panel was able to identify the graphics card, and I was able to get video output on my second monitor. This, you can see that everything on this motherboard is working pretty well. M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards I have tested with my Wi-Fi expansion card. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are properly functioning on this motherboard. It's a very big plus. What is a minus is that the motherboard is not able to overclock any CPUs since it's limited to the desktop chipsets. Still, this is not the biggest minus. The same as Huonanji X99 Atom F, the biggest problem of this motherboard is this power delivery system. Having just three phases with the doublers and the six pairs of quite limited MOSFETs, the motherboard is not able to hold up E5 2678V3. Running ADA64 stress test for 30 minutes with E5 2678V3 Turbo Boost unlocked, I have got more than 80 degrees Celsius on top of the motherboard or on surface of the radiator. This means that the MOSFETs under the radiator probably hit 100 degrees Celsius or more. This is not acceptable and unfortunately it's not allowed or very, very not recommended to use CPUs such as E5 2678 v 3 
with Machinist X99 RS9. This motherboard is limited to E52620, E52630, E52630 LV3 CPUs. Probably you will also be just fine with E52640 V3, but with a Turbo Boost Unlock that might be a bit of a stretch because the CPU has turbo frequency of 3.4 GHz and on all 8 cores that might be a bit too much for this power delivery system to handle, but I hope it's gonna be just fine if you have good airflow in your system and you do not stress test your computer 24-7. One more small issue that I have forgot to mention is the smart fun. Smartphone works well with the CPU cooler, which should be connected over here, or CPU fan, but there is another 4-pin fan connector located over here. Unfortunately, this 4-pin fan connector is not working with the smartphone, and if you connect there a fan, that fan works with a static speed. The same applies to these 3-pin fan connectors, but 3-pin fan connectors is a standard issue for all Chinese motherboards, they do not support uh, adjusting rotation speed of 3-pin fans, but this 4-pin fan header also does not adjust speed rotation of uh, PWM fans. It's only this one, which is for the CPU fan or a CPU cooler, which is working with a smart fan. But at least we have a working smart fan, unlike Machinist X99K9. All in all, my score for Machinist X99 RS9 will be 7 out of 10. The score is higher than Honor GX99 ATEM ALF because the motherboard has extra features but works just as good. We have got two extra memory slots and quad channel memory configuration and M.2 slot for Wi Fi expansion cards. Still, compared to Honor GX99 ATEM F, we have lost PC Express X4 slot, which Honor G has over here. This means you cannot install a second NVMe adapter for SSD drives. And we also do not have the sleep mode. Other than that, Machinist X99 RS9 is better in basically everything compared to Huan G. And if you're looking to build a budget gaming computer, I would most likely go with the Machinist X99 RS9 and flush Huan G X99 ATEM F files. Of course, I have also added support for Machinist X99 RS9 to my Mi 899 application. Thus, if you're looking to perform Turbo Boost Unlock with your E5 2620 2630 LV3, feel free to use Mi 899 and flush one on GX99 ATEM F BIOS with a Turbo Boost Unlock. It works just fine. I have tested with my E5 2678 V3. Still, if you would need the original BIOS for this motherboard, I also added it to Mi 899, you will find it there. For now though, that's probably all I can tell you about this motherboard. I hope you have enjoyed it, I hope this is gonna help you assemble your budget gaming computer. For now though, I have to run and test four more Chinese X99 motherboards. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.